A big day for U.S. trade officials first meeting with the Mexican economic minister in Washington today for another round of talks regarding NAFTA. The minister says they are very close to a deal, and so he will be back with his team in Washington, D.C. next week. Right after the meeting with Mexico, it was Japan's turn up at bat. They were meeting with Robert Lighthizer, the U.S. trade representative. So here to break this down for us is Fox correspondent Edward Lawrence. I know you know the people at USTR, but there's got to be some news that's pretty positive today if we're as close as the Mexicans say we are. Yeah, Adam, we, we almost need a flow chart for all the trade representatives that are coming in and out of there. Well, this was a unique situation this afternoon where the Mexican delegation meeting actually ran so long, they basically passed in the hall with the Japanese delegation. Now, the U.S. Trade Representative's Office released a photo of the Japanese side and him meeting there. Uh, in a statement late today, the U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer says that they agreed with the Japanese side to work towards a more open and free bilateral trade. Now, that will be the second pin for the administration as they work to finish NAFTA first. The Mexican economy minister says that on a scale of 1 to 10, with the negotiations, they're at about an 8 or a 9. Basically, we started with a huge list of items to be closed. Now we have been able to reduce that a great deal, and we are basically trying to do it the best effort to close up. But still, there are things that have to be solved. And the Mexican of Secretary of Foreign Affairs joined the delegation and celebrated his birthday. Still, according to the Mexican economic minister, the sunset clause has not yet been discussed. The U.S. wants to end NAFTA in five years. The Mexican delegation would like to see a reassessment of the numbers after that. Well, today, the Mexican economic minister says that the last bit of negotiations depends on the spirit in the coming days. Adam? And just a quick follow-up. The, the meeting with the Japanese economic minister, it's, is it a high-priority meeting or is it really Mexico that's getting the total attention? Because there's a deadline if we're going to get a deal in place with Mexico. And I believe it's, is it August 23rd or 27th? I always get it switched. But in order for Congress to then act. So which is getting top priority? Right. It is the end of August. Uh, it, it, clearly, the focus is on the NAFTA negotiations. This is just the beginning of the negotiations with the Japanese side. Uh, however, it is, you know, of high importance to the U.S. because that's the second peg they want to get. First, they want to knock down NAFTA and then Japan, give ourselves some wiggle room, so to speak, in order to go after the Chinese uh, with our economy. All right. Uh, and we do have this situation with the Chinese and the uh, what the, the 16 billion in new tariffs that go into effect at the end of the month. Ed, don't go anywhere. You're going to be yeah. part of this panel. But let's welcome Rick Unger, host of the Pod Complex. He is here live in studio with us. It, it, correct me if I'm wrong. It would appear that Donald Trump's strategy of, you know, being very aggressive with our trading partners is working at least with Mexico, although the Canadians have signaled they're ready, I think, to come back. Well, there's, there's an interesting situation with Mexico. Both sides are now highly motivated because of the new president coming in, Lopez Obrador. Nobody knows what to expect from him. He is generally regarded as a socialist, and nobody can quite figure out how he would impact on this if it's not done. He, by the way, I am told, having lived in Mexico for a number of years, he wants it done before he gets in. So they're highly motivated. I think it will get done. I don't know where we stand with the Canadians. They're not in such a big hurry. Well, Ed, that, that would be a good point. Have we heard anything from Minister Freeland in Canada or even from the Trudeau government? Uh, are, are they truly ready to come back in? Because a lot of the details you've been reporting to us were about the auto negotiations, and it seems that's been resolved. Yeah, and you know, one of the things that I did contact them today, and they are not, there are no plans for the Canadians to come back to the table here. I think the strategy, though, from my sources from the U.S. is they're going to get a deal with Mexico, and the president said he's happy with bilateral deals, and then take that deal to Canada and say, hey, do you want to sign on to this, or we can just go our merry way, uh, the two of us trading back and forth, which would then leave Canada, so to speak, out in the cold. So the Canadians almost would have to sign on to a deal if the U.S. and Mexico are ready to go on without them. So, Rick, do you think they get the deal done? Uh, the deadline for uh, NAFTA is late August, or even if it's a bilateral agreement, uh, late August. Can they get it done in order to pass something before the midterms? I think they do. I think the Mexican part gets done. I don't think the Canadian part gets done. Uh, they are sticking to their guns on some important issues. Worse feelings, actually, between the negotiators, between Canada, Canada and, and the U.S. Uh, better feelings with Mexico. Can't overstate the, the impact that this election had with Mexico. 
everybody, including us, including Trump, mm -hmm. including the Mexicans, they are very, very nervous about it. They want this. Well, Obrador doesn't want to have to deal with this no, on his plate. He wants want it either. cleared yeah. before he comes into office. Because, because to deal with it, he knows what's best. And to deal with it would kind of fly in the face of his of base. The stated philosophy. Yeah, right. socialism. Exactly. So, so let me ask you, um, Ed, I'm, there's a potential here. Uh, the, the issues that are holding us up with Canada, I would imagine it has to do more than just autos. It's got to be the issues over lumber as well as dairy. I mean, is there any chance that these can get resolved? Because I can imagine that trade numbers will still fall if we're not, a, a, you know, a three-party agreement here for North America. Yeah, and there is a chance they can get done. I do want to make one point, though. The feel from the Mexican delegation changed after that election. Before the election, they seemed to be sort of sticking to their guns. You could tell that they didn't really want to give in to any of the U.S. Uh, negotiation points uh, on this. The feel absolutely changed over the past week I, as the delegation came into town. They're more open to, it seems, making a deal. Now, on the Canada side, yeah, they're going to be, have a real sticking point with agriculture. You know, Canada, with cheese alone... Uh, it's something like 287% or 83% tariff on uh, U.S. cheese. You know, I have friends in Canada who say the first thing they do when they come down to the U.S. is they buy cheese because it's so expensive or the U.S. cheese is so expensive there. So agriculture is going to have a difficult time going back and forth. But the Canadians would like a deal based on autos. Um, I, you know, I get that feeling from the representatives I've talked with that they would like to come to the table and have some sort of negotiation points uh, that they can agree on with the U.S. in terms of autos because a lot of parts go across the border back and sure. forth up in Michigan. So, so Rick, if we get a deal, and let's assume, let's wish for the best, we get a deal with the Canadians as well, uh, and a lot of it is about autos, Will it's clearly a victory for the Trump administration, but is it a victory for the working men and women in U.S. auto factories? Because the Canadian dollar is weaker than the U.S. dollar. Canadian wages are a little bit less than U.S. wages. Mexican auto wages are less. And although there are protections built in for a percentage of whatever has to be produced has to be at the higher wage U.S. level, eventually manufacturers want lower wages. I, I got to give it to you. You are the first person to ask that question of me, and it's the right question. Well, thank you. My mom is watching, it's, so I, she'll I'm, give I you a thumbs up. He did well. Um, it's absolutely the right question because while, while President Trump is going to claim this as a victory when he gets it all done, I'm not sure if he can. We have to see what the final details are. But the reality is this is not going to have a positive impact on jobs in the United States. And that, I thought, was what this well, was supposed and, to be about. And if I'm, it's been a while since I covered the, the bailouts of the bankrupt automakers. But I remember the UAW had instituted two-tier wage systems. The new hires right. were coming in much at lower. really much yes. lower lower wages than the people who, what was it, 30 and out. I mean, they're coming in at almost 18 or maybe $20 an hour. What, much lower. Yeah. It's much lower than much that. Lower. So, so listen, you can get jobs, you know, outside the auto industry. This is going to, if, if autos end up as involved as we think that they will in this deal, it is going to be very hard. Places like my hometown of Youngstown, Ohio, Lordstown, yes. this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt. They used to make the Chevy Cavalier there. Yes, they did. That's right. And it's going through a change right now. They've already reduced shifts there. It's going to hurt. And you're going to hear a, just a very loud howl from a number of people in Congress who come from that part of the Midwest. You know, this is a problem. And nobody seems to want to talk about what it's going to do to auto jobs here. I'm going to stop there, Rick Unger. Thank you very you're much. Well ahead. Uh, well, no, I like to talk about Ohio. You know that. I he was that. giving me grief about Cleveland in the green room. <laughs> Ed Lawrence, thank you very much. You are on top of it for us with the USTR, and really appreciate you bringing us up to speed.